So, you know, before we start, uh, uh, we were flying on a plane, me and my wife and kids. Uh, my daughter said, hey, dad, can you um, uh, open this little, uh, the Southwest uh, pretzel packet? I did, and I, um, I chipped my tooth right there. So huh? I don't always look like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. So I just wanted to uh, put that up Not at all. Think of it more look, look, looking like uh, Sam Shepard. There, <laughs> there you go, yeah. You can, always, you can always turn that in the right much, direction. A much better reference, yeah. Um, pretzel. Oh, you mean you're ripping the package? Gosh, didn't they always tell you? Hey, that might be the first time I've actually heard that something bad happened, but that's why that's why they've been telling us that our whole life. That's yeah. That's, uh, that's, and my that's my wife uh, gleefully told me the same thing. Yeah. See, I had to I had to lean in on that. Yeah. No. Good to meet you, Lance. Didn't notice the tooth. Right. <laughs> right. Um. You know, I love these CIA like secret agent stories like this and uh, and, and Hannah um, uh, and for Harris, your your character here. I mean, there seems to be a lot going on with him, you know, uh, like the backstory and things like that before we get to actually see him in the film. Yeah. Well, the, one of the cool things about this movie is it jumps around a little bit in in, uh, in its time frames, um, all within recent history. But you go um from somewhere in the dc metropolitan area to a black site in kosovo and everywhere in between um and uh it keeps you guessing when i come into a role like this believe me this is a script i have to read a couple times so that i track not really the writer's intended uh, uh through line for your character but the real one in other words they mix up the character, they mix up the time. There's a couple of twists and a reveal or two. Um, so it, that's what makes it fun to watch. But uh, it's a puzzler for sure. And um, Harris is r really s squarely right in the middle of that. Right, right, totally. Now, do you, um, do you create a, like your own backstory uh, for a guy like this? Well, some of it plays... Um, some of it plays in, in the story, so you'll learn it a little bit later. Right, yeah. His older associations, uh, you definitely have a feel that uh, Harris works well and for a long time with the, his sidekick and partner that Jason Isaacs plays. Um, and so does that even garner some sympathy that these guys get along pretty well while they're you know violently interrogating a, a prisoner? I don't know, but the movie definitely plays on um not knowing not not knowing who the bad guy is and in this case these bad guys have been bad guys for so long that they're good at it so they may not even know um that they're treading into moral uh, moral boundaries i like you said there are like a couple twists really cool twists i might add um that i didn't even see coming uh is that one of the reasons you kind of wanted to to do this take this on yeah, I think it really skillfully uses everything that the thriller genre offers um, right down to uh, the way it's photographed and the sensation and the close photography and the closed spaces, um, shadows and uh, fog. And um, and it, again, in reading it, I just knew that it had uh, it, it had all those great qualities of films like this in spades. Um, I think by the time I was reading it, they, I knew that they had Mel Gibson in. Jason came in right after that. But one of the great storylines in the movie is carried by the three other lead actors, which are Katie Cassidy, Aiden Canto, and Reese Quaro. Um, they're, they're that small unit crew that is, uh, is brought together for the first time in the first time frame of this movie. Uh, when you do have like twists like this, do you try and find little, I don't know what to call it, like Easter eggs or something to put into your performance? So like when somebody goes back to rewatch it, we're like, oh, I should have caught that. Hey, uh, on this one there, they had one and, and kind of bailed out on it, but it was a scheduling thing in fact. So because they were on a certain location where a certain character <laughs> uh, is to step into the frame obscured and maybe in the shadows. I mean, that's all intended. It's in the script. We're not, you can't quite make out who the, the shadowy figure is. They shot a version of it with a um, a, a stand-in, a body double in the wardrobe. Um, and so that would have been a great Easter egg that it isn't even the actor, me who wasn't in town yet to shoot it, but we did end up reshooting it. So that's also a little spoiler that that guy that you can't quite tell who it is in that first turnaround in the story, that is indeed Harris, the part I play. But 
were you not to know that it's just what you said it plays in that um in that murky area that's quite intended in agent game that you uh, have to kind of say get through there to find out what's going on uh, you're, uh, you've also mentioned uh, Jason Isaacs. Um, I've talked to him a couple times, and I think he's great. Uh, uh, watching you two, like your back and forth together, man, it, it kind of like made the film for me. Yeah. Oh, hey, thank you. We, well, we had a great time. It happened instantly. I think he's just an old hand too, and knows that uh, you can spot another one. So we just kind of <laughs> lasered in on how to play that sort of uh, that friction of doing something that you know is not right but doing it with somebody you trust and that you've relied on so um th that as much as they're friendly and have kind of a verbal shorthand that i really have to attribute as much to the script as to us um but that camaraderie uh, seemed to come naturally to us and that puts a little more bend on those scenes because it makes them seem like likable guys because they kind of get you know, they're chums. So it throws you off of really what they're doing, which mm -hmm. is to, you know, manipulate one of their pr prisoners in order to, uh, you know, further the cause of the government, which turns out to be, you know, at the cost of uh, human life. So, um, yeah, they feel that they're doing the right thing. It's a really, uh, that's some of the, the thrillers friction that you feel. How did you guys work? Did you like rehearse at all or anything? Because I mean, you guys were just so like on top of each other, dialogue wise. Uh, like, incredible. Like a lot of that too. I'll I'll uh, I'll uh, credit the editor and Grant S. Johnson, the director, really had that energy bringing it into the room that we're shooting in this really cool location. But I have to credit Jason for some of that because um, I mean, us together, we had just such incredible energy, um, joking around in between and heightening our humor and our you know. Or uh, I, I don't know. I think he really brought that overlapping, uh, which uh, uh, that that gave a familiarity, but also added to the urgency. And so I, I just thought he, he had a great energy and tapped into that, and th that helps really um, uh, propel those scenes in a um, in a suspenseful way. Yeah. How do you like to work? Do you like to rehearse at all, or do you just want to like let's let's go and see what happens? Well, I don't, I don't know. It's always different. And so it'll be, I can't really get set on liking one way of doing it. Um, but gosh, I love running scenes over and over. And um, on this, I don't know that we had that. I don't know. I can picture like the both of us sort of revving up to it. So in its own way, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be days of rehearsal. It'd be an hour even. Um, and then marking it on the set for how they'll shoot it and then just bringing it to life in a, in, you know, so not really intensive um, rehearsal beforehand for this. Both of us, I think we're running through on a schedule to, um, to, to get there to make, you know, to make it with that kind of energy. So, um, yeah. Uh, and, and you've got some, a couple of badass like action scenes as well uh, in the film. Do you, uh, I've, I'm an actor too, and I've filmed a couple of scenes like that and it's just, like a blast. Yeah. Uh, I mean, do you, uh, do you love doing that kind of stuff? Is that kind of, you know, it's like one of the perks. Some of this is so well conceived and shot and edited that there's bits of it that when you watch it are a little bit off camera, you know what I mean? So I'm like, ah, not that we, you know, it was always intended where like the killing takes place over there. Not again, that I won't always want to like depict violence, but these scenes were really highly choreographed. You know, of course, one of the big set pieces is a shootout in a warehouse. So that becomes so clamorous and so um, claustrophobic and right around the next corner kind of suspense um, that they, they really that they really nailed. But then, you know, Lance, it gets down to sometimes your little piece is just a little piece. You're not supposed to be in the room when they're blowing up the stuff, even though you're right there. So when you get back in, you're just maybe crawling into a close up with some smoke blowing by as if the thing just blew up. Um, but that's what's kind of ingenious about these movies and about Agent Game that they get. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going to be that full of action because it's just bits and pieces, but they've already figured out how they're going to cut it. And so that's all they want to get or that, you know, and the stunts naturally are broken down into its bits. So uh, such a fascinating process. And I worked with a great, uh, especially great stunt crew on this. I feel like you've been uh, looking at your sort of projects that you've done the past couple of years. Man, you've been busy. 
Yeah, well, that's the way I love it. And I've had the opportunity. So no reason not to, I think, well, very much so in the past in a different type of industry and in a different pursuit, different age. For me, um, I, I, I just, um, I just love where it's at right now and um, get to do uh, what I love doing and in a way that I'd always hope to set out to do, which is as um, just a wide and wild variety of different parts. So to come visit in the action thriller suspense uh, genre, uh, even recently, I think you mentioned Hannah, um, has been a thrill because up until now, I haven't uh, haven't done too much of that. So I get to sort of check another box um, and um, it's just a thrill. So I can't I can't help myself. Um, was that a I'm conscious so, effort to so kind of go that way? So many incredible opportunities, as if as if it's me. These are other people giving, you know, writing parts and you know, uh, and bestowing me with, uh, you know, with uh, with with these different roles and stuff. So that's where it comes from. You know, um, go go on, man. Sorry. Uh, no, was that like a conscious effort to to kind of go to to move your career kind of in that direction as well to like do things you haven't done before? Yeah, well, I think it goes along with um, that. That's not a very original idea. I've just been um, very blessed to be able to do it. And a lot of times um, as a lifeline to just keep acting. So if I wasn't striking it as the romantic lead all of a sudden, which happened many times, um, I, I'd have to go take something else. And, you know, and so it it caused itself. Uh, but it, it was always one of my notions to, you know, to be a man of a thousand faces. I mean, I had to drag this one around. Um, didn't get to put on a whole lot of fake noses or prosthetic uh, stuff. Uh, so, um, but uh, thrilled and blessed, you know, to have uh, so many um, varied opportunities. Yeah, incredible. Uh, I've just got a couple more questions to ask you, like acting questions. What was the very first SAG job that you got? Oh, uh, wow. The first SAG job I got was a lead in a TV movie. It was called Sin of Innocence. The story leading up to that is incredible. The people that reached out, saw young talent uh, um, and, and stuck their neck out uh, for my uh, on my behalf. Renee Valente was the producer of that. She pushed a quarter across the table when I auditioned and said, I'm going to bet you a quarter that you're going to be a star. And Arthur Allen Seidelman, who's nearing 90 now, I've been in touch with recently directed that was with Bill Bixby, D. Wallace, uh, who were huge stars at the time and are huge stars in my heart. Um, and Megan Follows played the young lead. And I was a teenage uh, movie of the week, uh, started a, a, as a lead in, in, a, in a, TV, a TV movie. That's when awesome. millions of people watched those in that single night, they put them on. So it was a super high, uh, high level in um, and I've had lots and lots of dips uh, since then, um, but so many pinnacle moments, I, I almost can't count them. And, and um, incredible. Thanks for asking that, though, to remember those those times. Great people. Yeah, uh, absolutely. How, now, how did they find you? Well, I was a student at Northwestern and a Los Angeles agent went on a talent scout, which is a lost art. Uh, you know, I think there's still just a few breeding grounds, the comedy houses and stuff, you know, but I think American talent people forgot to go find uh, American talent. They were still doing it in the 80s. Chicago had its bloom. John Hughes, uh, Risky Business, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ferris Bueller was right in the, those years. So they came and were, were finding kids to be suddenly Hollywood wanted young male, white male leads. Um, and uh, they, they, they came and cleaned up some of the crumbs in Chicago, and I was one of them, so uh, stuck around. Uh, and then my last question that I just love to ask, what's been your worst audition ever? Oh, I still have bad auditions. Um, hmm. My worst one ever? I don't know. But you know what, what that taps into is all that regret I have of not being quite prepared enough for a bunch of different times, a bunch of different Christopher Nolan, I remember reading for and having to look down at the page and bumbling the lines. That was a bad audition. Maybe I'll just leave it at that. Would that have been Inception, maybe? Yeah. Imagine not being ready for that the filmmaker that day. Um, I've had plenty of those, uh, but that doesn't happen anymore. Now it's just, you know, if I audition, uh, they really, um, they really don't want me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? 
No. Well, think about it. There's, I get so many parts that just come to me, you know, because they want someone just like me and either the other guys aren't available or what, all mm-hmm. the other reasons. But that's because those would be the ones that come in my direction. But other than that, if they're auditioning people and they're auditioning me, that means they probably need to be convinced. That's my thinking. Yeah. That doesn't mean, hey, anyone out there, I'm available to audition <laughs> anytime. I still, uh, you know, rigorously prepare more than I did in the in the past. Um, but um, yeah, auditions suck. But you gotta you gotta do them, and if you can't do it half assed, or you know, that's that's nobody's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really appreciate it. You bet, Atlanta. I sure appreciate it. And break a leg out there. Hey, thanks. Thanks. <laughs>